Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, here with Benji Narsen, as always. Benji and I in the midst of the LFR um, Twitter sort of account competition that's every year. Benji, I think, is odds on to win that. I'm not as um, popular as he is. I reckon you're going to clean it up. Benji, what, where, what do you reckon your chances are right now? I think I've got a... I don't actually see my chances that high. While I had the most preliminary votes to get into the competition, I... I don't know. I also also don't feel like going to the part where you can get more votes by having riders endorse you in the competition. But I'm like, I can't be arsed to do that. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun, but it's not professional. <laughs> we need to get Nate uh, Silver 538 to do some sort of polling analysis to see who's going to win. Anyway, this is a bit too late because... Uh, people came to my door asking for charitable donations for a Christmas raffle here in Andorra. Comment down below whether you think I told them to go away or if I gave them some money. See what <laughs> people think of my. That's the poll for my public perception, Benji. But anyway, without further ado, Team Bike Exchange, Jayco. They're adding a, this is what happens. They had another Jerry Ryan company. That's what they're called in 2022. Men and women's. We also have in the middle of this an interview with Kel O'Brien. Uh, who's one of their incoming neo pros, young Australian lead out man slash I think he can be a bit more versatile. So stay tuned for that as well. First, we'll do the men's team, evaluate their 2021 season, then transfers, then predict their teams for various major events and then some hot takes before we get into Kel's interview and the women's with Benji. 2021 was not the same as sort of the, the peak years of bike exchange or Green Edge or Mitchelton when the stage wins galores with Yates and Trenton or even better than that when they won the Vuelta they had two world tour wins Chavez Catalunya Yates Giro stage 19 Yates came third in the Giro GC as well because they shortened the Cortina stage otherwise I don't think he would have he won tour of the Alps and there's some other and a stage there they're their only dot pro wins and other than that there's like six five wins at like two one level hungry and saska and slovenska it's it's got to be a below pass season benji yeah certainly i think uh i re-listened to our podcast of last year and we were aiming at roughly 20 victories for this team it didn't come close to that nine is just not good enough and of those only two are world tour like you mentioned and yes winning a stage in the Giro is good but it's also what we expect from someone like simon yates i would have been more surprised if he didn't win a world tour race this season then Chavez, he had a bit of a resurrection in Catalonia, but it didn't last too much longer than Catalonia, to be honest. So yeah, it is what we expected from Chavez. I didn't expect too much more personally, and I'm already surprised that he won that stage in Catalonia as well, personally. But for the rest of the season, you're you're right. And one name that's missing in the winning books is quite clear to me. It's Michael Matthews. I know, and he did a lot of hard world tour racing, obviously did the Tour de France, and he definitely didn't do I don't know, actually well he did Swiss and then he ran into um MVDP, Harry Nice, all the stages like we spoke about for Laporte, Benji, they were either pure sprint stages against Bennett, Pedersen and Bowl, or they were like pretty tough uphill finishes where he got beaten by Roglic. Uh he had really good form at Sharubla as well. I think he yeah, what did he do? Sixty nine race days, virtually all of it, I think. All of it was at World Tour level except for Brabant to Pale. That's insane. And Grosse Priest to Canton Argao at Schelling one, I think. So hard schedule, definitely not a send races one. He's missing Catalonia where I think the sprint level was low or Romandy, those sort of races. But he still accumulated a lot of a lot of points as well. I'm on the view, Benji, that Matthews is still really, really good. And that people will probably think Magnus Court is now a better rider than Michael Matthews. Magnus Court had better results in terms of wins, of course. But I believe Court is a better rider than Michael Matthews. Really? Yep. I don't know about that. I think Matthews just targets races in the wrong way. I think also possible. If you look at his Cuyera time and uh, where he finished in that GC group, I think he's just targeting the wrong way. But anyway. Yeah, you're right. Simon Yates, 68 race day, some curious races where he did Giro, TDF where he DNF, then went to the Olympics, then did San Sebastian, then did Burgos to not do the Vuelta. Really, really odd uh, from Simon Yates. And I think 
what do you think's missing, Benji? <laughs> I mean, it's just, especially with Esteban Chavez going out the door, like is the problem that they're looking at Matthews? I, they don't have a sprinter. They, they don't have a Ewan replacement from years ago and they're trying to use Matthews as both their puncher, their classics man and their sprinter when he's kind of none of those things. Yeah, certainly. And I think their goal in their team is perhaps to use a getting grows in the future as their sprinter, but I currently don't see it based on the performances he's delivered over the years. And I feel like Yates' podium at the Giro is a good result. Like, let's be honest, podium at the Giro is a good result. And yep. I don't expect much more than from Yates than podiuming Grand Tour in a year. And a few stage wins in yep. Worlds, perhaps. He did one this year. That's a bit on the low end for Simon Yates in my eyes. He can win more than one. But we shouldn't expect Simon Yates to win a Grand Tour right now against Slovenians or against a uh, Bernal that is not having back pain. So, I don't know. I feel like we shouldn't expect too much more from him. I think that podium is good for him. But then I indeed look at the rest of the team and there's a lot of talent that I feel went to bike exchange, grew a tiny bit, had one breakout race. I think Hamilton, for example, had a bit of a breakout race. Was it Bologna? A year or two ago, or last year? Tirreno, he won a stage, didn't he? Yeah, he did win uh, something in Tirreno as well, or did well, well at Tirreno at some point, I think. But um, Rob Stannard, for example, he also grew, and that's why I that didn't have that thing, that, that, that victory that was like, okay, he's on, the, he's on the plateau now, he's there, and he's obviously leaving right now. Is there a problem with their development of their younger riders, or... Is that something I'm in? I'm imagining. Well, there's no problem with young Australians that are pretty good who've been out of contract. I mean, we look at Jay Vine. I'm not sure if he got a call from Bike Exchange to step up to their team, World Tour level. And there's plenty of races like Tour of the Alps, etc., or Burgos, which they can send him to and relieve a bit of the burden on a, a Simon Yates. So I don't know. I don't know. What's, I feel like there's plenty of Australian talent dotted around, and um, they don't even need a development team. I just curious sometimes seeing like the signing of Jan Maas instead of Jay Vine is just really really odd to me uh but yeah I think they're missing a, a peak sprinter they think Groves will be that guy uh remains to be seen he's only 22 I think he's he's developing okay I think you know he's quite young Matthews I'd be interested to see if they use him in a different fashion next year and not as like a pure bunch sprinter and they just don't, as you said, Benji, they don't have other GC options other than Simon Yates with Chavez going out the door. Uh, they have no one else I really can see apart from House and at, say, Tour de Hungary that can really be a second guy to go to the Vuelta or the Giro. Oh, sorry, the Tour if Yates goes to the, the Giro. And that's fine. That's fine if your team is set up to hunt stages like EFR or sprint like in breaks, or sprint stages like De Koenig are, who often don't send a GC rider pretty much at all. Lucas Hamilton was supposed to be that guy. I, I don't see it. He's 25, turning 26 in February. This year wasn't great. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it. They sort of picked him over, over Haig, it seemed, and I think Haig is looking like the better one. But into their transfers now, Benji, yep. Uh, see what you think about them. Out the door is Nieve, which is pretty good, going to Kaha Rural. I quite like that for him. Love it. Bookwalter retired. Zeitz to Astana on like a one-year pre-retirement deal. Barnabas Peak, I think they're letting go. He's unsigned. Rob Stannard, no surprise to anybody. One of the young talents, Benji, out the door. I mean, we predicted that back in <laughs> back, back Andalusia, didn't we? Yeah, certainly, because... Uh... People that don't remember Andalusia, there was a sprint where uh, Rob Stannard basically got crashed by MP and eventually, uh, what was the reaction of Bike Exchange to that? Basically that he had to apologize, Rob Stannard, to the person that crashed him? Correct. He had to apologize for being angry at MP for crashing him out and uh, taking away his first professional win uh, because, you know, MP obviously a veteran of bike exchange back in the day so if i was a young rider seeing the team selling me out like that i would be i'd be leaving yeah. as well <laughs> other talent that's going out the door is esteban chavez who i think pretty sure chavez is is he older than nairo he looks you know obviously looks younger but he is he's 31 but he's had he's been dealing with sickness for a few years 
and didn't have the consistency this year. I don't know what the plan was at the tour. Very odd tour, but he did have a good result in Catalonia on both the mountaintop finishes, second and first there, but just lost a lot on the TT. Uh, he did flesh in the age, eighth and fourteenth. He did a weird schedule. Like he, he's good yeah. on the longer climbs, and Basque I think didn't suit him as much. Did Swiss, but yeah, the tour Benji. I'm looking at. He just hovered around like twelfth or thirteenth, and I remember I was on a call on uh, the, the Detour podcast with Dan Jones, who used to do the fabulous Bike Exchange YouTube videos, and it was with Matt, Matt White as well. And I was like. Is Esteban going to lose some time and and go for stages? Because he, he he sat Benji in this what should we call? It? We got to start calling it something. Benji, the tenth to fourteenth zone of zone of irrelevancy where you can't get in the break. <laughs> yes, you can't get in the break between stages, but you're also not top ten. I'm open to your suggestions for that name. Yes, uh, I'm actually uh, on board with calling that something because that is a position where you have to make a decision of, okay, can I enter the top ten or not? If not. What's the point in getting 11th or 12th in this Grand Tour? Let me go in the break, lose some time. And perhaps losing time might offer me the opportunity of getting more in the break, leading me to an actual top 10 eventually. So all that stuff can be uh, can work together very well in the end. And that was not really the case there. I feel like I do recall him trying to get in some breaks and he did, just he did. not working. Uh-huh. But I um, I just got the feeling that in general... I think that he's better than the year before, but he's nowhere near what he was in the past, of course. But you think that there's a possibility that Chavez comes back to the level that he was before? Chavez, I think, can win Giro stages, Tour de France stages, and the right yep. stages. He Catalonia showed that, like he danced away from Ineos on Portenay. He chased back. Actually, he was coming very strong back to Yates on Volta 2000, the stage before where he hadn't responded initially. If he'd gone with Valverde, Kuss and Yates, maybe he makes it and, and contests the win. I think I think his climb, his 30-minute power, and certainly to altitude is still excellent and capable of winning on the biggest stages. I just think – so that's why he's a bit of a loss, but he's out the door. So – that's still one of their world tour wins out the door and some other good results, which I don't see being replaced by Lucas Hamilton. And what I don't know about Benji is do EF pay more than bike exchange? Like, I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to leave. I don't know. Bit odd. One thing that I do notice is that if you look at what Chavez did in the past, for example, we look at his second in the Giro and third in the Velta, both in 2016. And if we take a look at that year, that was obviously his best year winning Lombardia and winning Emilia all in one year as well. So uh, definitely can't complain that year. But what's noticeable is that those Grand Tours had Nibali winning in the Giro ahead of Chavez and Volverde. Kreisweg was the best time trialist, had that issue, of course, where he crashed on top of that climb. And it's noticeable that if you've got Nibali, Chavez and Volverde in the top three, those are not necessarily the riders that you look at and say, those are the best time trialists of GC riders. And look at the Velta, and you've got that being the Grand Tour where Froom was beaten for that top three. But outside of that top three, there's also riders that aren't necessarily the best time trialists. Is that perhaps something that changed over the years? Or was that just a year that time trial is, time trialing was not as important in the Giro and the Vuelta, where he was able to strike true and now it's just more important in races and it's not happening? Do you think that that might lead him to getting into the Giro for Yev? Has to go to zero, right? With Venny Venny openly saying time trials shouldn't count and reducing it to seventeen <laughs> Ks. It would make a lot of sense. Uh, but he's out the door. So the guys coming in, let's see if they can replace his level uh, or say Stannard's projected level is only twenty three. We have my personal favorite, Lawson Craddock, doing a swap. So uh, this, this was really surprising to me, Benji Craddock leaving EF, American. Okay, Olympics. Yeah, he sold me out in the TT. Um, cost me my mortgage. That's fine. But that wasn't on EF's time. He At the Vuelta, he was so good in that break with Magnus Core. I don't know. Like He's still a good domestique, still a great guy that fits their strategy in terms of being that guy we always talk about. You know, It sounds simple, but it's not having that guy with the potential stage winner you have in the break to do the dirty work. He's only 29. I'm really surprised. I think that's a good signing depending on the money. Um Although he's old, maybe he's already lost a little bit because he was photographed with that giant and then got a termination notice but then wasn't fired, so it's <laughs> fine now. Uh, Jan Maas from Leopard Pro Cycling, 25-year-old Dutch rider, 
who has been at Conti level for a long time. I don't see much upside in him, but Bike Exchange do a lot of Saskatoon, Hungary races where I think he's just going to go to those races, which are frankly two. Yeah, they're all two one sort of level. Uh, Sobrero, talented from Astana. I thought it was weird, but good for Bike Exchange. He's young. Uh, Jesus David Pena, I don't know too much about Colombian. Alexander Borma, I need some help from you, Benji. I think you know about him. Campbell Stewart is a Kiwi from Black Spoke who has a decent result. And Kel O'Brien's not showing, but he's a, I think he's the stagiaire this, this year for a few races. He's a lead out man as well. So, what stands out from you amongst those riders, Benji, particularly the ones I'm not familiar with? Yeah, so firstly, when we look at the transfers that you mentioned, that his is David Pena guy, you can't see the results too much that he did uh, on uh, PCS because his biggest race was uh, a U23 race. You can find that on First Cycling if you want. And uh, there he won the uh, U23 Tour of Colombia for the uh, second time, the Vuelta Colombia. And he did that ahead of his teammates basically this year. So his teammates were second, third, and fifth, which... I don't know if that says anything about the quality of the field, but it shows that one team is dominating and that the team might as well have decided who of the team has won that race as a consequence. But if you look at the history of that race, who are the winners of that? We've got in the past, uh, last year, Diego Camargo. He's now riding for EF, if I recall correctly. Jimenez, don't know what happened to him. Sergio Martinez, not sure what happened to him. Cano, I remember that guy from riding for uh, a Colombian... Conti or pro Conti team, probably Conti team. And then the years before, Carapaz, Lopez, Miguel Angel Lopez, a few years in between with riders that did not make it at all. Uh, Betancourt, Fabio Duarte, and now. So some riders that we do know that did make it, but it's a 50 50 chance that he makes it, like based on what I'm seeing here in this list. And with the rest of his results, I think 51st at the Giro U23, I'm like, it's not looking like it will. But I hope for him that he does. But it just doesn't look like it right now. So, um, do you reckon he's getting paid more than like? What's the difference in salary between a guy like this and Madden Vandenberg, the Dutch guy who's going to EF, or Steinhauser to EF? I think there's a big difference. Do you reckon like those guys can't be on that much? I mean, there's a big difference, perhaps the other way around. Like this guy here, his is David Pena. Minimum. Next to the risk as a rider, you also have the risk of this guy is moving to Europe for a bit. Yep. And in a new environment, perhaps he hates it. You've got Contreras, Rodrigo Contreras, who had a real issue with having to move to Europe and be in that environment and as a consequence, had trouble making it through that barrier. And I think that's something, an extra risk that adds on to it and perhaps a reason to pay less for a ride like this. Then again, you, you're probably going to have to invest in accommodation for the kid. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I mean... If bike exchange do know about bringing guys over uh, who aren't European, but it's usually Australians, uh, and then the guys like Chavez are on, you know, they're on enough money that their lives should be relatively easy here, uh, one would think. But yeah, that's a good point you make, Benji, about moving over, uh, etc. When it comes to Balmer, I feel like he's uh, the kind of rider that is pretty fast after uh, hilly races. So he's uh, basically a... Italian classics kind of rider with a punch is based on the results is what I can figure out on him personally. And he's got a a decent time trial, I think. Nah, I'm not sure. I can't I can't really deduct that from the results. But just a, a guy that can get over hills, versatile rider. And uh, I recall him getting second in last stage of Ronde de Lizar, which was uh, behind Heis Lehmreise, who basically cleaned up that race. Um, but certainly a, a race where youngsters do shine, and I think that Balmer uh, has some talent. Definitely, definitely worth a, a world tour contract. I think when you look at that Giro de Belvedere result near third behind Ayu, so uh, I don't mind. There's upside in him. The Stewart looks quite good, and then Craddock is a, a notable, like a proven commodity in world tour. Sobrero, though, I, I mentioned briefly, I was surprised. Like I would have thought, Estana is like an Italian, basically the closest we have to an italian team in world tour he was good in tt at the giro d'italia he actually climbed well at tour of slovenia uh behind pagacha i know it's not a huge race but that was behind pagacha ulisi etc i worry that his tt is going to move back now benji because durbridge does good power and not great results all the time i i don't know like, what do you think they want from Sobrero? Do they see him as a potential GC guy? 
I don't know, but I'd love to see it attempted in smaller races because uh, we had Tour de Slovenia where he was one of the last five riders on those climbing stages. But obviously, uh, Pogacar then slapped him completely. But I do believe that he's got the ability of getting over hills. He's got the ITT to go for solos. Perhaps he should go in breakaways on hilly terrain and do what others do, like a Mohoric, attack away just before the climb, yep. make sure you've got a gap before the climb, being able to climb well as well, and then able to solo away on the flat afterwards. So that kind of stuff, I think that could work. But I don't know what is the plan with him. Is he going to be supportive as a domestique? It's also possible. I think that a rider like Sobrero could probably do that. Perhaps one thing we look across and don't realize is that perhaps team riders just want to go to a different team at a certain point like Craddock yeah exactly. he's been at EF for so 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 long ever since the days they were still called Cannondale so perhaps he just needs a change in environment because he feels like he doesn't get the opportunities that he wants to get because he's too I heard that I think they let him go oh okay I didn't know that yeah oh, well that's what some rumors I heard which yeah surprising are we are we starting or do we need to really enforce the free Mezgets uh bandwagon benji is he coos has been free perhaps too much is it mezkets that needs to be freed in 2022 nah nah i don't <laughs> i don't believe in it i i really don't believe in it he's still an outsider sprinter in the same way that matthews is either way you choose you're going to be likely beaten by better sprinters unless it's an uphill sprint i think the last time mezgets has his had his good years was was it a UAE tour in 2018, 2017, 2019? Tour of Polonia, I think, where he won three sta- two stages in 2019. I thought his 2020 was really good. I don't remember much of his 2020 outside of just getting second somewhere in the tour. He won, a f- he won some reduced. I think he's a decent climbing sprinty boy that needs to be freed in breaks. I think he can win sprints. Like I think Magnus Court would have not have been happy to see Mez gets in the group in, rather than Bagioli and Simmons. I think yep. that's someone. Anyway, I'm going to go through the 2022 20, roster list before we pick their teams uh, for 2022 major events. But before we do that, mention our show partner, Lacole, who produced performance cycling apparel. Christmas is in 20 days, somewhat alarmingly. Can't believe it. And they have a special Christmas gift guide on the Lacole website. The link is down below. They produce top-notch performance cycling apparel and they've got you covered whether you're in the southern hemisphere where it's hot for christmas which i'm kind of thinking about going back or if you're in the cold northern hemisphere winter they've got stocking fillers to luxury gifts for discerning riders so make the cyclist in your life smile on christmas day so thanks to for supporting the podcast you can check them out at lacole.cc right off through their team just so it's fresh in everyone's mind for 2022 Balmer, Bauer, Bewley, Coglione, Young Italian, Craddock, Durbridge, Alex Edmondson, Sagabu, Germay, Groves, Hamilton, Hepburn, Halsen, Armand Grundal, Janssen, almost forgotten about, Christoph Jul Jensen, just got extended, Kangert, Konishev, Maas, Matthews, Meyer, Mezgetz, O'Brien, Pena, Schultz, Callum Scottson, Dion Smith, Matteo Sobrero, Campbell Stewart, Simon Yates. I think it's missing some really the, the top talent. But anyway, Benji, they're cobbled classics. It's a bit thin on the ground, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like it's uh, it's thin on the ground, de- definitely. And if you look at the team that they have in 2022, then I think that oh, it's very hard. Janssen, I'm on Grundal Janssen is one yeah, of the riders in there. That's why I got signed. <laughs> Matthews, I would dare to put in those races, but then you're like, okay, is he going to do the cobble races and Amstel and the Hill Classics or... What are you going to send them to? And then you have to kind of balance it out and see what fits them best throughout. And um, next to that, we've got... Oh, boy. Mezkets. Jack Bauer, I guess. Luke yeah. Durbridge. Yeah. Edmondson? He's a climber, isn't he? I think he did some cobble race well in the past. I vaguely remember that at some point. He won the Tour of Flanders for juniors in 2015 True. or 2023. True. He's 27. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, it's it's thin, and this is why I give a little bit of sympathy for Matthews. I think he's he's relied on for for everything. He's relied yeah. on to win bunch sprints in the tour, to be the classics cobble classics guy, to be their Arden guy, 
And you say, oh, well, Wout Van Aert does that. I'm like, well, Wout Van Aert's a fucking freak. Like, and also, I would say even Wout Van Aert's classics took a pay the price for that a little bit. Um, like, it's tough to have one rider, you know, that's responsible for all those things to be on, to win at that top, top level. So, yeah, it's Matthews, I think, is their best option as a leader, Benji. And would you, if you were Matthews in Bike Exchange, would you have him focus on Cobble Classics or the Ardennes? Where do you see? I think, like, Brabant is his best. Brabant and Amstel, I think he can win. I just don't see RVV. Yeah, Brabant and Amstel and MSR. I think LBL is too difficult for him. You agree? Uh, MSR, he should definitely be there. Um, I think in MSR he can in RVV he can make the second group, uh, but I don't think he can make the first group or the first group of attackers that got away. Um, he's kind of got the same problem as a Kristoff in that race, really, where he gets dropped on the climbs usually. Um, but then again, I think that matches his better climber than. Christoph, just to make that clear before people notice that comment and think I'm saying something else. Uh, I think that for the Cobble Race, it's just not that that powerful. And I think, didn't didn't he have trouble at Sunweb because of a, a Cobble Race that was public info something about somewhere where he couldn't ride a envelope or something? There was this whole thing a few years ago. I, I believe it. <laughs> whatever it was uh problems with this i think he couldn't ride omlo because he forgot to do his homework for the race that's right you're right yeah yeah well speaking of omelope i think he should do omelope i think he should do msr uh i should think Bruno? he should do Gen I, I agree with benji i think he should skip liege and flesh and he should do amstel and we'll get to our so he's their leader for the couple classics uh, in terms of young talent for that, maybe send uh, Kel O'Brien just to get a taste for it and Craddock. Uh, what about Giro Benji? It's got to be Simon Yates. It's, it's perfect for him. Yeah, Simon Yates and uh, attempt for a podium again. That's what I, I'd i say. Perhaps, yeah, obviously, you would try to win, but I feel it's more likely that he's going to end up podium in that race, really. And what do you do as a, as a surrounding for him? I think that Simon Yates is the kind of rider that I don't feel like does need so much support, right? I feel like he's the kind of GC Correct. rider that just sticks in the group with other riders, but that makes me want to think he would put a few riders in there for the breakaway. Yeah, for the Giro, I'm going with Matthews again, Benji. I think if it's, I think there's so many parkour in this race that suits him. I think the Giro is the best option for him to go for stage wins. And I think Bike Exchange should really try and knock the Giro out of the park. It's going to be maybe a weaker sprint field. Maybe you don't have the Wout Van Aert and MVDPs of this world who, in a, or a Col, uh, Colbrelli probably won't do it, who make it tough in a climbing course with a sprint at the end. I think Matthew should go. And if Pidcock is going to do, I think Matthew should basically match Pidcock's plan of going from classics to then Giro and then see how the first week goes, I think. What are you going to do with Matthews after? The Giro are you going to choose Tour or Vuelta? I would then do... <laughs> I'm saying you shouldn't be over race, but I'm going to say... This. <laughs> I don't know if the, the Tour de France, it's, it's a tough one. And then where does Lucas Hamilton go? I think they'd probably try again with him at the Tour. I don't know. I would honestly just go for stages at the Tour with... Them, I'd probably maybe send Dion Smith. Dion Smith, sixth at Milano San Remo last year, good in the Italian sort of flatter classics. Their tour, that's where you got me, Benji. I don't know. Like, Dion Smith feels like the kind of guy that you sent to the Vuelta as your sprinter. I would send Gross to the Vuelta. If you don't set matches, would you? Yeah, I'd send Gross to the Vuelta with, I'd say it's time to step up, go to the Vuelta with the lead-up train, see how you go. That's what I would do with Groves. Um personally and then Sobrero sorry I should go to the Giro Colioni is Italian therefore by law as Benji said last pod must go to the Giro I would send a breakaway sort of team to the tour maybe even yeah. Damien Housen does he ever do the tour I have no bloody clue if Housen does a tour he rarely did. he's done it last time he did the tour was in 2018 he got fourth I think he's, he's like not a bad climber Housen uh, against not great competition, so I don't know. I just go for stages of the tour and breaks. I just and then we haven't seen the Vuelta parkour, Benji, and then maybe get let Lucas Hamilton have a go. To, uh, Vuelta, we don't know. I would send Groves. 
Is there anyone here you see? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Or do you send them to the tour for stage wins? Probably. He's done that before, I think. Um, That's never going to happen, you know, because he's going to try and stay in GC and then he's going to ruin the chances of going for stages. And by the time he realizes (laughs) that he's ruining the chances to go for stages, he's probably uh, all the way down in GC but doesn't have stages left. Uh, well, in so well in 2019, he did Andalusia, Paris, Nice, Catalonia, and then he did Giro fully for GC, and then uh, his TT was terrible. But he came eighth, and he had a couple second and third, and then Tour de France. He actually did go for stages. He won two in 2019. That was the year when Trenton won one as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon that's the play, and then see how the rest of the year goes. Italian classics, Sobrero, the eights, maybe I don't know, but. Yeah, as you can tell, we're not probably too high on this team. Over under world to win this year, like I'm setting it at four and a half, Benji. I'm taking the under. I'm taking the under as well. I don't trust them to do the schedule that we've proposed. I feel like we could see a lot of Michael Matthews sort of seconds again in like the Vuelta. Um, Impressive performances, but not on a terrain where he's the best uh, again. So I'm worried for this team. What do you think they've had issues with funding last year? That it's the Jerry Ryan passion project. They've not, you know, Stora, Haig, Vine, but all these young Australians not on bike exchange. What do you see that's missing that they really, really need right now? Manuela Fundacion. It has to be that. (laughs) <laughs> no, like it feels like they don't have a uh, very complete team on all terrains. They've got yeah, leaders right. like Matthews. They've got basically no real leader for the cobble races. Let's be honest. And then we look at the Grand Tours and we talk about Sam and Yates, and then we're like, okay, well, who should we send that support? And I'm already thinking, and I already have to go through the names. It's not like someone comes up in my mind, and I'm like oh, this guy should 100% be the super domestique of Simon Yates in that race. I don't have that feeling with this team. And I don't know, it feels like that's for all the races that they have throughout the calendar, except perhaps the uh, Hill Classics, where I do think a match who's in Amstel is pretty strong in that aspect. But um, yeah, I feel like we're missing a strong team around the leaders. And we're missing a few leaders. We're missing a lot. Yeah, it's definitely, I don't know, Nick, for Simon Yates' support, I guess House and Nick Schultz is kind of okay. But yeah, the young guys they do have aren't of a quality where I think, okay, they're going to be, Kangert's also not a bad Mountain Domestique on this day either. But yeah, it's it's definitely not a broad squad and it's definitely missing a premium sprinter and they're hoping Gra- Caden Groves will be that. Maybe, maybe he will. But yeah, it's... Do they lose? Every single one of their leaders after a few years, in the same way that Ewan left them as the best sprinter, exactly. you've got uh, Adam Yates leaving them instead of Simon Yates. Um, in my opinion, Adam Yates was a better one-week racer, and I feel like could be a better uh, Grand Tour rider as than Simon Yates. Sorry if I do you disagree or agree with that. I think yeah, Adam Yates is better. Okay, and there was another name I had in my head that did the same a few years ago or left, but I can't think about it now. But I feel like that's a pattern that we see here um, as well. And perhaps his budget as the issue, like you mentioned, the fact that they have so many issues finding sponsors and uh, as a consequence, maybe don't have the budget that other teams have. I think it was uh, rumored to be 10 mil or something, but uh, it's not the biggest number in the world. But I feel like... They could probably do a bit better than what they have right now. Yeah, or just, I mean, as I said, I keep saying it over and over again. I, I don't think Jay Vine would have cost 500K a year. So, but yeah. as you, you mentioned, Benny, people potentially, these are people out of contract Matthews, Yates, Mezgetz, Durbridge, Dion Smith, Housen, <laughs> Lucas Hamilton, Schultz, Groves. They're all out of contract. Now they might extend, but yeah, a big risk. Simon Yates, I mean, I don't know if he. Depends if other teams will take him because he had that um, suspension previously for the TUE thing. I've got a question for you. If Simon Yates is not in this team, is this a pro Conti team? Without Chavez, yeah, it is. Like, I think it's not great. And 
I think it's good they got some of the young guys like Palmer and Stewart and Sobrera is great. But yeah, I just they're kind of not ready yet either. I know. I'm trying not to be too negative, but we're under. I think you went under four and a half, did you? I went under. Yeah, I went under. Okay, hot takes for this team. I think Michael Matthews actually does come back and wins. I think he wins two World Tour races next That's year. It's already half of the allowed for you because he's at under four and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think Lucas Hamilton doesn't top 10 a Grand Tour. And I think Simon Yates. I think Simon Yates doesn't podium a Grand Tour. Okay. I think Matthews wins Milano San Remo. Okay, those are indeed quite literally hot takes. <laughs> I believe that Kenny Groves does not win a sprint this year. Oh, you're f- no way. That is a hot one, though. I'll give it to you. <laughs> I believe that Olaf Koy is a better rider right now, and he's not Oof. even remotely where he needs to be. Oof. Yeah, sorry. Uh, if you look at this year, did he win a race? He yeah, won, he won a pro prologue, prologue I think. at Slovakia. It's not, I said win a sprint. So technically, he didn't <laughs> win a sprint in 2021 either. So is it that hot of a take either? <laughs> I feel like he's he's a glorified Conti sprinter. He's 22. You're right. But... He won Tour of King High Lake and two stages of Tour wow. of wow. Tour of King High Lake. Wow. <laughs> sorry, but that's uh, that's basically Mareshko territory. But uh, then again, Maresh goes in a basically a World Tour team, Alpecin, right now. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, that's quite funny though. But that's a hot take. I'll, I'll, I'll say that is hot. Okay, because he he'll probably go to like Saskatoon, Slovenia, uh, Slovakia, yeah. etc. Yeah, okay. I hope he does well, but I don't see it. What about people leaving? Is, will Simon Yates leave or Matthews? Oh, uh... I think they both stay. I think they stay as well. What I do want to add as my hot take is that I think that in the Vuelta, Cajarural will arrive with Nieve as GC rider, and Nieve will be better in GC than any rider at Bike Exchange. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> or will win more races. <laughs> Nieve will probably win a World Tour, he'll like win a Vuelta break or something. So yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that one. Anyway, those are our hot takes. Let us know if you think it's going to be over or under those sort of wins we said. Uh, and hopefully Bike Exchange as an Australian will have a bounce back season next year. Uh, and we'll wait to see if, if they are. But make sure you like the, the podcast you're watching on YouTube players. Give us a review on podcast players and subscribe on your relevant platform of choice. Thanks to Benji, as always, for his dedication on the Sunday uh, and his likelihood of winning the LFR poll and we'll see you with the next one. Ciao.